Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 788. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel Magic Trick 788 to 791, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video here, we have a task. We need to total after the last zero. So as I go down here, I can see this is the last zero. So I want to add up everything here. So we should get 14. If I change this to 6, I then should find the last 6 and add up everything after this. Now, for the zero part of this, um, we, since 0 is one of the numbers we want to consider, we actually don't just have one criteria. If we were doing 6, we'd have just one criteria. We'd say, hey, are any of these equal to 6? We'd find this 6 right here. We'd find that it's the fourth position. It would work just fine. But 0, check this out. If we do a formula here and say equals that empty cell, Excel's going to treat it as a 0. So since we have 0 here, we're going to have two conditions. Is it is this cell, or uh, this is the last one, is this cell equal to zero and is it not blank? Because when we ask that question here, is it equal to zero? True. Is it not empty? I said not blank here, I meant not empty. That's false. And a true and a false will give us ultimately a false, so that will be excluded. Now, we're going to do some Boolean math or Boolean logic here. And that involves a logical formula. I'm going to say equals open parentheses. And the first test is going to be, is anything in that range equal to 0? Now, this will give us a series of trues and falses. Now, this is an operation. This is saying, are, are these two things equal? And because we have a range of values, we've jumped into the realm of array formulas. It'll deliver, if I highlight it and hit F9, a bunch of trues and falses. You can see the second to the last one is getting a true, because it's equal to 0. And this true right here, oh, that's a real 0. Now we have two criteria. And since both have to be true, you use multiplying. This is AND criteria. And in Boolean logic, you use multiplying. That means true times true will result in a true or a 1 in our case. And that's what we want. That'll indicate that, yes, 0 AND it's not blank. So we build our second. A uh, logical formula that happens to also be an array formula, and our operator is not less than, greater than. Our syntax for empty in this case is going to be double quote. Now I'm going to highlight this, F9. And the second to the last, the penultimate one right there, is comes up false, so that will be excluded. Control Z when I highlight this whole thing. And F9, you can see a 1 and a 1, so which will represent true. Those are the only two cells with zeros and are not empty. Control Z. Now, we need position ultimately. This is the seventh one. So I'm going to use the match function. Match function specializes in, in finding. I hit tab, but that didn't work. I needed an extra open parentheses. Match will find the, uh, the relative position. Now, when we highlight this and hit F9, you can see it gives us ones and zeros. Well. We want to use the match function to find the last one. Well, the way it works is if we do approximate match, we say find any bigger number than the biggest number possible and always get the last one. So Control Z. There's a problem here. If we put a 2 here, which is bigger than any of those numbers, and close parentheses. Now, I'm going to have to enter this as an array because this is an array formula here. So I have to use Control Shift and Enter. It gives us the tenth one. It just went to the last one. So we need to do a little trick here. We need to take this and say 1 divided by. And then I need to put all of this in parentheses here. Because I need to, uh, order of operations, we do division and then multiplying. So I want to force that multiplying first. So I put it inside parentheses. Now, what happens when I do this? It's going to give me. Uh, 1, because 1 divided by 1 is 1, and 1 divided by 0 is an error message. So we're going to get a bunch of errors. In essence, we've excluded the zeros there. So now when I say look up the biggest number, it'll see this one. It'll see this is the last number. And because it's still smaller than it, it will take it, Control Z. If I Control Shift Enter, it gives me 7, which is what I want. Now I can take this 7, and I can ask the question relative position 1, 2, 3, all the way down to 10, are there any relative positions that are greater than 7? Well, 8, 9, and 10 are. What I need to do is compare this single 7 to an array of the numbers 1 to 10. So I'm going to create 
the beginning part of this, I'm going to create 1 to 7. Now, I won't need this to be dynamic in case I insert any rows up here. So I'm going to use the row function. Now, the row function will allow me to highlight a bunch of rows. And notice, that, well, the row function is expecting a single reference. Now that I give it a bunch, if I hit F9, you can see it gives me 4 to 13. That's not what I want. I really want 1 to uh, 10. So I'm going to subtract from it this row. Well, now 4 minus 4 would give us 0. If I highlight this whole little thing here and hit F9, that's not what I want either. I want it's one off. So I simply add 1. And that is a good way to get a, uh, an array of relative positions. Now, if I highlight this and hit F9, I have 1 to 10. Now I can simply, whoops, Control Z. Now I can simply say, is anything in that greater than F9? And there I get true, true, true. So I have 1, 2, 3. Now I'm going to put this inside of some product and simply multiply this array, arrays of falses and trues times the actual array itself. And it will give me 2, 0, 12, and add them. Now this right here is not correct. That right there we don't need. Now here's the thing. Let me just show you, because this is a cool little example here. If I highlight this and hit F9, you see how it works? We've got the trues there. And look at this. I didn't have to isolate this in parentheses. And the reason why is the order of operations for Excel evaluates comparative operators way at the bottom of the list. So minus and plus get done first. But I do need to convert these trues and falses to ones and zeros. So I'm going to put a double negative open parentheses like that. So around that it needs, because I need to run the double negative, which converts trues to ones and falses to zero. I need to run that very last. So if I highlight this and hit F9, boom, there I have it, 1, 1, 1, Control Z. And now I'm going to put this all in sum product, because you see that was an array of zeros and ones. And now I just multiply it by this. So I put sum product. The first array of ones and zeros in our cases is that. I put my cursor at the end. I type a comma. I get to the second array, and I simply highlight this. And there we have it, 14. If I change this to 6, I get 17, which is exactly what I want. Now, uh, this is the post I made. Um, someone else, I think, made an even better post here. And I'm going to show you that dynamic range. So I'm going to grab this. And I'm going to come down here. Now, think about the way this formula works is it's going to say, hey, I'm going to start here and always go up to the, the last cell reference that is right below the last zero. Well, you can see we already have uh, a, a 7 here. That's our 7. Well, watch this. You can use the index function to not retrieve a number, but to retrieve a cell reference. So what we want for this dynamic range is from A13 to A11. When it switches to 6, we want from A13 to A7. So watch this. I'm going to use, click on the cell, the last cell, so it's A13, and type a colon. That gives me two A13s. But then I'm going to type index, index function. And I'm going to, I need to look up a cell reference. Well, index can do that. So I'm going to highlight here. That's the array comma, and that's the position. That 7 tells me the row number. Now, why in the world does index look up? How does it know to look up a cell reference instead of a number? Well, let's check this out. Let's highlight this and hit F9. Oops. <laughs> it's returning the actual number. No problem. I evaluated that by itself. As soon as it sees this colon and we evaluate the whole thing, index is programmed no longer to retrieve the value, but to retrieve the cell reference. So I'm going to hit F9. It will show me all those values from 6 to uh, the last one. Ah, that tells us, and I'm going to Control Z here, that we actually need to add 1. So for this example, I want uh, m the match, the 7, but I need to go one further. Remember, match is just delivering a 7. So I go to the end of the match, which is the green one, and plus 1. All right. So now when I highlight this and hit F9, that gives me exactly what I want. Now, 
there's an array in here, so we're going to have to, we could put it in sum. And use control shift enter. Let's just see what happens when I sum product here. Because some products, sometimes you, you have arrays that you have a single array and it'll work, but I want to hit enter. It, it gives me an NA because this argument, this little thing in here is just not going to let us uh, use some product. If it was itself inside of some product, it would work. But the fact that it's in the lookup array for match disallows us from. Uh, you know, we have to use Control Shift Enter. So I'm going to not use some product. So that if someone looks at it, they're they're like thinking like, oh, some product doesn't need Control Shift Enter, but some does. So I'm going to use this function to signal to whoever sees this that yes, in fact, this is an array and it requires Control Shift Enter, Control Shift and Enter. And you can see when I Control Shift Enter, that's me telling Excel I did an array formula, and those curly brackets are Excel telling me I understood. Now if I change it to zero, boom. All right, we'll see you next trick.